On this episode of China Uncensored, the death penalty in China. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. They execute a lot of people in China, more than the rest of the world combined. Now, the official number is considered a state secret, but it's estimated to be somewhere between 3,000 to 5,000, whereas in 2012, the rest of the world executed just shy of 700 combined. Only 43 in the U.S., and the U.S. is ranked the fifth executor of people in the world. That just isn't true. But wait a minute. China is the most populated country on Earth, so maybe that explains the high execution numbers. But here's how the numbers break down. Say we go with the low estimate and that China executes 3,000 people each year. That's 2.2 person per every million residents, while in the United States that ratio is only 0.1 person per every million resident. So yeah, they execute a lot of people in China. The big death sentence right now in China is that given to former railways minister Liu Zhejun. Over a period of 25 years, eight of which he was in charge of the now dissolved railways ministry, he took at least $10 million in bribes. And he would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for those meddling kids and that deadly 2011 high speed rail collision in Wenzhou City that killed a bunch of people. He didn't really hand out contracts to people who knew what they were doing. Now, Leo's death sentence came with a two-year reprieve, which almost always gets reduced to a life sentence, which almost always gets reduced to 10 to 15 years in prison. Of course, since China, as I have said, executes a lot of people, not everyone is so lucky. Case in point, Xia Junfeng. He was sentenced to death in 2011 for stabbing to death two Chengguang. What's a Chengguang, you might ask? These are Chengguang. Actually, no, those are just propaganda photos. These are Chengguang. They're not police. They're in charge of managing street vendors, and this is how they do it. Notice the difference in uniforms between the propaganda photos and the real life Chengguang. Shirt tucked in, shirt clearly designed not to be tucked in. Makes it easier to beat people. So Xia said he stabbed the two Chengguan in self-defense because they never identified who they were and just started beating him. But at the trial, the only witnesses the court allowed were other Chengguangs. Doesn't sound fair, does it? That's because it's not. The Chinese regime kills a lot of people who we wouldn't traditionally call criminals, or that we wouldn't traditionally say had a trial or even committed a crime. We'd usually call them dissidents or religious believers, and we'd usually call it an authoritarian regime, making people disappear. And since authorities have admitted to relying largely on the organs of executed prisoners for the 10,000 transplants that take place each year, and since we've established those prisoners never actually went through any legal system, you can kind of get an idea of what a grim holocaust state killings in China are. That illegal organ trade was even a central plot device in World War Z. The book, not the movie. And the death sentence is pretty arbitrary even when it is applied to the court system. Shen Dong-based rights lawyer Liu Weiguo once told The Atlantic that communist officials will order courts to issue a death sentence if it's a matter of maintaining social stability. Wow, that sounds totally arbitrary and easily abused. You can be executed in China for any one of 55 different offenses more than any country on earth. 31 are non-violent offenses. Of course, if you have money, you can always just pay off the victim's family so they don't press charges. Remember, we're not talking about rear-ending someone's car, we're talking about crimes that you could get executed for. Like Gu Kai Lai, wife of disgraced politician Bo Xi Lai. She was convicted of murdering British businessman Neil Haywood, but was given one of those suspended death sentences due to mental illness. Now, compare that to a poor villager whom rights lawyer Liu Xiaoyuan, at one time a lawyer for Ai Weiwei, once defended. The villager was denied psychiatric assessment by judges and was then sentenced to death. Now, traditionally in China, most Confucian officials preferred rehabilitation over punishment, not to mention execution. But Mao Zedong and Deng Xiaoping like to use the death penalty to, quote, assuage the people's anger. It's not really about laws and justice, but about whatever the whims of the party or the raving masses are, which could spell trouble for old railway minister Liu Zhejun. Because even though the precedent is for death sentences with a two-year reprieve to become 10 to 15 years in jail, there are cases where it was changed back to execution. If the people were really angry, and people are really angry with Liu, 
In 2003, triad leader Leo Young was given a commuted death sentence, but people were really upset and said he should have a harsher sentence. And so the courts decided to give it to the people, and he was executed. So what happens if people really want the former railway minister to get the ultimate punishment? I mean, Chinese leader Xi Jinping has been going on about shaping up the Communist Party and rooting out corruption. Will Liu Zhejun be able to escape the death sentence despite the extent of his corruption? What do you guys think will happen and what do you think of China's use of the death penalty? Comment below and be sure to check out these previous episodes of China Uncensored. If you want more, you can always follow me on Twitter or follow China Uncensored on Facebook. Thanks for watching. See you next time.